Hi there and welcome to our final lesson in the series on linear functions. My name is Dylan. By the end of this lesson you should be able to determine the properties of a linear function in a real-life example and use a graph and a formula to find input values and output values for the function. Did you know that in America they measure temperature as degrees Fahrenheit while in South Africa we measure it as degrees Celsius and zero degrees Fahrenheit is not the same as zero degrees Celsius the two temperature scales are very different now imagine that Bafana and Bafana are playing a soccer match in America and we hear on the news that the temperature is 99 degrees Fahrenheit what does this mean? is it very hot? is it very cold? Will the team cope in those conditions? Well, look at this information. A human being can only handle a change of around 5 degrees Fahrenheit in internal body temperature without physical and mental performance being spoilt. So the players and the coach need to know beforehand whether it's going to be very hot or very cold so that they can regulate their body temperature correctly. Also, do you think that the temperature will change the way that the ball behaves? Temperature can also affect the elasticity of the ball. A cold or underinflated ball is less elastic and absorbs energy. A warmed ball or overinflated ball is more elastic and so more flexible. So a really, really cold ball will behave similarly to this underinflated ball when it bounces. In other words, Bafana Bafana will need to adapt to their game plan and preparation. Now let's have a look at this information about temperatures contained in a travel brochure. The graph shows that the relationship between degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius is linear. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as 0 degrees Celsius. And we know that 0 degrees Celsius is the freezing point for water at sea level. 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as 100 degrees Celsius. At sea level, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Now if we want to know more or less what the corresponding temperature is, we can draw a line and read off an approximate value. Each point on the line represents a pair of numbers, x and y, where x is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and y is the temperature in degrees Celsius. A graph is a neat package of all the information that relates the two temperature scales. The scale on the graph is not accurate enough to read off 99 degrees Fahrenheit, but it is close to 100 degrees. And the corresponding y value is relatively close to 40 degrees Celsius. So Bafana Bafana would know that they're playing in really hot conditions. But sometimes reading off a graph is simply not good enough. We require absolutely accurate values. For example, some of the equipment in the studio is very sensitive to temperature. And some of it comes with warnings about temperature. This warning states that the temperature must be kept between 60 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. We can again use the graph to estimate the corresponding values in degrees Celsius. The minimum temperature allowed is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So we read this on the graph over there. Now in degrees Celsius, that is between 10 and 20 degrees, so it looks to be approximately 15 degrees Celsius. The maximum temperature allowed is 68 degrees degrees Fahrenheit, which on our graph looks to be about 20 degrees Celsius. Maximum means that at most the temperature can be 20 degrees Celsius, any higher and the equipment may be damaged. Minimum means that at least the temperature must be 15 degrees Celsius, any lower and the equipment may be damaged. 
So on the graph, we read the maximum as the greater y value, the bigger y value. So 20 degrees Celsius, that is our max. And at about 15 degrees Celsius, that is our minimum value. The warning says that the temperature may not go above the maximum and it may not go below the minimum. So for these temperatures here, between the max and the min, those are the correct operating temperatures. Anything outside of that range can be considered the danger region. We have spoken about increasing and decreasing functions previously. On this graph, it is evident that the function is increasing. As the input values in degrees Fahrenheit increase, so the output values in degrees Celsius also increase. So the gradient or the rate of change of this function is positive. By the way, can you still remember what a function is? I keep referring to functions, so it's important that you understand what I mean. For every one input value, there is only one output value. Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? 212 degrees Fahrenheit is equal only to 100 degrees Celsius. It wouldn't make sense if 212 degrees Fahrenheit could be equal to 100 degrees Celsius or 15 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Celsius. That would make life very confusing. Now, we need to figure out exactly what this equipment warning means for us in South Africa. We need the temperature in degrees Celsius, which is the unit in which we measure temperature on our air conditioners. Let's determine a formula so that we can accurately convert 68 degrees Fahrenheit into degrees Celsius. Well, to start with, we know that the graph is a straight line, therefore it is a linear function that we're dealing with. Y is equal to mx plus c. We also know two points on that graph. We know point A is 32, 0, and we know that point B is 212, 100. And we also already know that the gradient, or m, is the difference between two y values divided by the difference between the two corresponding x values. In other words, the gradient, or m, is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Therefore, in our situation, m is equal to 100 minus 0, the two y values, divided by 212 minus 32, the two x values. Note the order. The 100 and the 212 come from point B, and the 0 and the 32 come from point A. Now we need to simplify this. Remember we ended up with m equal to 100 minus 0 divided by 212 minus 32. So therefore m is equal to 100 divided by 180, which can be simplified down as follows. Therefore m is equal to 10 divided by 18. And so finally, m is equal to 5 divided by 9 in its simplest form. Think for a moment what this rate of change means. For every 9 degrees change in degrees Fahrenheit, there is a change of 5 degrees Celsius. So now, we know that our formula is of the form y equal to 5 divided by 9x plus c. The problem is, we do not yet know where to start. We still need to solve for c, the constant. So thus far we know that our formula is y equal to 5 ninths x plus c, and I've chosen point A, 32 naught, simply because it's convenient for me at this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute 32, the x value, in place of x in my formula, and 0, the y value, in place of the y in my formula. So therefore I'm going to get 0 
is equal to 5 ninths multiplied by 32 plus C. And I'm going to use my calculator to calculate what this value is here. So 5 ninths, which is 5 divided by 9, multiplied by 32 is equal to 17,8 when we round it off to one decimal place. So therefore, 0 is equal to 17,8 plus C. Now we can easily solve for C because there's only one unknown. We know that C is equal to negative 17,8. And so finally we can rewrite our formula knowing both the gradient and the constant as y is equal to 5 divided by 9x minus 17 comma 8. Remember what it is that we are calculating. This formula tells us that the temperature in degrees Celsius is the same as 5 ninths of the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit minus 17 comma 8 degrees. Now, back to the equipment in studio. Do you remember what we estimated 68 degrees Fahrenheit to be in degrees Celsius? Well, now let's calculate that exact amount. And in order to do that, we're going to need to make use of our formula here. We're going to find out what 68 degrees Fahrenheit is exactly in degrees Celsius by substituting 68 into our formula. So, we now know that Y is equal to 5 ninths multiplied by 68 minus 17 comma 8 and I'm going to calculate this on a calculator and when I do so I get that y is equal to 37 comma 8 minus 17 comma 8 so finally y is equal to 20. That means that 68 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as 20 degrees Celsius. So therefore, in studio, the temperature is regulated to stay just below 20 degrees Celsius. In this series, we've used different tools to analyze linear functions. We've used graphs, formulae, and tables. In each situation, you need to decide which tool is most appropriate to use. So in the example where we were finding the temperature at which Bafana Bafana would play, it was accurate enough to simply read a value off the graph. To calculate accurate values, we needed to set up a formula using the information given. Now I hope that this series of lessons has shown you just how practical and useful mathematics can be in our everyday lives, and that you are now confident enough to tackle any problem related to linear functions.